Scott Nugent was a successful business sales executive named Kelly King, a top performer who earned various awards and recognition. However, at the age of 42, Scott made the difficult decision to transition. This parent of three suffered numerous medical complications and near-death experiences during the process and is now using the horrific experience to warn of the dangers to parents who are considering their kids for transition. So Scott joins me right now. Welcome. Thanks for coming. So Scott... For people who don't know your background, don't know your story, could you just tell us briefly what happened? God, everybody says that it's like a whole, it's like a day, but I'll, I'll converse it down. Uh, at 42, I was in a vulnerable place. I was in, in a, a marriage with a woman who hated being a lesbian, d didn't think she was. It was all me, a male born in a female's body. Uh, kind of in a vulnerable place, watching Jazz Jennings, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, you know, kind of looked at my wife at the time and said, hey, maybe I'm born in the wrong body. A week later, I was in front of a trans therapist, uh, an activist trans therapist, I guess. <laughs> and uh, she said, how long have you been dressing like a man? No, I ne didn't dress like a man. I mean, I was a business sales executive. But that, that sentence absolutely shattered me from a 42-year-old successful business sales executive to, you know, cutting any man's head off in a, in a board room to, oh, my God, I'm a total idiot. So was it the case that, I mean, a lot of people have testified and said that when they go to these trans therapists, that they are just affirming and saying, yes, you are in the wrong body or something like that. Is that was that your experience? Was it just affirmation? Absolutely. It was absolutely affirmation, affirmation. And that's why books like these are, are so uh, popular and Stella O'Malley and Jen Speck and uh, Sasha Ayad and all those people uh, because they are fighting back against the reality of actually helping people yes. um, that, that are in vulnerable places. And here's the thing. There are some people that medically transition and do walk a little bit lighter in life, um, but not very many, number one. Number mm. two, it's no different than I had twins and, and didn't like my stomach and had a tummy tuck. And uh, if I would have thought that that was going to save my life at the end, uh, when it was done, it would have been devastating. It's cosmetic surgery. Did you feel, though, that undertaking this surgery would resolve any problems in your life? Did you Absolutely. You know, here's the thing, and, and we don't talk about stuff, and I don't know why we don't talk about stuff, because we're butchering an entire generation of children uh, while society's going, yeah, 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 they have no clue. Um, so, yes, I thought it was going to fix me. And here's the problem and here's the truth. The people that medically transition have, um, you know, the similarities, same-sex attracted. So we're, you know, conversion therapy reversed. Uh, number two, they're autistic. Uh, number three, they're mentally gifted. Uh, number four, they're mentally ill. They are <laughs> people that have been through trauma. So all these people that don't fit in at a time at 11 or 12 years old when we would cut off our arm to, to fit in, I mean, it got me at 42. Uh, we're telling these kids that, you know what, you don't have a superpower of being different about being gifted. You know, you'll be a CEO at 25, but, you know, you're different, so let's medically transition you. And then you get to the process and you get through it and you realize, well, that didn't fix it thing on top of people like in society and you and all that kind of stuff are not saying the truth because everybody doesn't want to hurt a man's feelings that has a, a sexual fetish of, of being considered a woman and wants you know gender but, pronouns but some people would see you and see a man and say well that's a man but are you saying it's not possible to change sex no god no it's biologically impossible for one sex to become another what's not impossible is to take cross-sex hormones to do cosmetic surgery to appear like the opposite sex for comfort you know what we deserve all the respect and dignity for doing so. But what we don't need to do is step on children's heads and ensure that males with these fetishes keep their erections um, so that they're OK in life. This is a really important point. In a liberal society, surely everyone should be able to do whatever they want with their own body sure. and make decisions about themselves and their own identity. But you've spent a lot of time talking about children. And, and that, that is a different situation, isn't it? Because children sh can't consent to this kind of thing, can they? They cannot consent to these things. And until... The truth is told about medical transition until it's told that there's not now 12 complications of medical transition. They just increased it to 25 because they just actually turned over another study. All seven studies that said it was beneficial have been retracted or modified with oops, doesn't help anything, sorry, or uh, not enough time. The latest one went from 12 complications to 26 complications. And inside that study, there were two kids that committed suicide that were being medically transitioned that was suppressed. You need to know that. So, sorry, are you saying that the studies that are available into the transitioning of children, and there can't be many because it hasn't been going on for that long, that they're all coming back and saying, we don't have any evidence that this is helping matters? Yes! <laughs> well, you can't be... Yes! That. And that's not transphobic. But, but we have queer theory right here, right? Gay, not queer. Thank you very much, by the way. We need more righteous gays and lesbians to come up and actually take our community back instead of the righteous 
rights that we fought for for 50 years. We got, Stonewall got in 2003, same-sex adoptions. In 2013, same-sex marriage. After that, there were no righteous fights to fight for. We won everything. And decent gays and lesbians like us, by the way, we went home to raise our kids to do things that we needed to do. And lo and behold, Stonewall has no more money, no more donations, so they create a new business model that's stepping on our children's heads and on our children's health. Listen, let me tell you something. Today, I was walking through London. I had a totally different outfit on. I have an infection. I'm staying with a, a physician who said, you don't look well. Um, I have an infection. I'm walking around London, drinking a lot of water because she told me to. Couldn't find a bathroom. Peed on myself. While I'm going to a rally to speak about saving children, in the middle of London, I've got urine all the way down by, and all I see is Versace and uh, this. I'm not, a, I'm not a huge, like, prep. I've got alligator, alligator. You know, why aren't we talking about that? So do you think it's simply the case that people don't want to talk about it? Is it simply that it makes them uncomfortable? It's devastating or, to talk about well, it. Well, do they think they're doing something good when it comes to these children? That yes. are, they're saying that yes. they're feeling they're, they're, they're confused, and so they feel this might fix it. A lot of parents are told, if you don't uh, put them on puberty blockers, they'll kill themselves. You know, a lot and of that, and here's what I don't understand about your country, I'm sorry. Um, so we're talking about freedom of speech right here, right? Mm. Okay, and if I say something that offends somebody, or if I'm a UK citizen that is wrong or offends their business, then you take them to jail. So why aren't we taking Susie Mermaids from Mermaids to jail for saying better an alive daughter than a dead son? There's only one long-term study, all seven that said it was great have been, you know, rejected. One long-term study says that these kids... The truth, the only 30-year study with over 300 trans reps, these children will be more suicidal after they medically transition. Take her to jail. But what you're talking about here is actually having a discussion about the data, about the studies. The discussion doesn't seem to be happening because there's too much noise, sometimes violence. We've seen that going on as well. Yeah. People attacking uh, protesters or feminist protesters or whatever. Yeah. You mentioned the gay rights issue, and I think that's absolutely key. Uh, in uh, Hannah Barnes' book, Time to Think, she talks about how the overwhelming majority of children who are referred to paediatric gender care yes. are same-sex attracted. Yes. So effectively, what, you're, sure. what you've got here 43 percent, 67 percent on genders. But anyways, you know what? Facts, max. Go ahead. But, but even so, that, 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 that's a significant proportion. And that would suggest, doesn't it, that, that, that there's a kind of thing going on here where kids who are gender non-conforming, probably going to grow up to be gay, are almost being fixed or heterosexualized in a way by this mm -hmm. process. Is that a problem? Is that something we should be talking about more? Absolutely. But here's the thing. We've got total and complete jerks on one side. We've got total and complete jerks on the other. I mean, I just did a, a, a rally with Honor Oak and, and another organization. I stood, so I stood in the middle. I started crying and threw my mic down. I said, F you all. You guys are all messed up. We're butchering an entire generation of children. You're over here yelling at these people. You're over here yelling at these people. And the facts are is these kids are starting to kill themselves, but nobody will listen to my speech because you're yelling and you're yelling. Shame on everybody. So the better way to do it is to sit and have a conversation and, and to let people know what the facts are. Yeah, and be realistic. Why can't we say that, hey, you know what, grown men on estrogen that are beating up lesbians, uh, there might be a problem there that we need to talk about instead of thinking, oh, my God, we don't want to offend this man and tell him that he's a man and actually call him a man. So where, what in the hell are we doing while I'm urinating in the middle of London because of a bottom surgery that's completely and totally experimental? I get you know, infections every six weeks. I probably won't live past 10 years. I won't see my grandkids. And you know what? We want to make sure that trans men, you know, believe that they're women. And then we got righteous gay people like this finally starting to come up. Thank God. Find your voices for these children. So you're talking about the potential complications. You've experienced all sorts of complications as a result I've of I've had surgery. a pulmonary embolism. I'm on blood thinners. Um, I have congestive heart failure. I have lung damage. Um, I have a, you know, a, an arm. Um, <laughs> where do you want to go with this? this keys, these kids are getting early onset osteoporosis. They're getting, uh, they can't have kids. I have a video on my phone right now. Some 11, this kid started 11 years old taking puberty blockers. He's 19 asking me if he's a mutant. He knows that he, he ruined his body, uh, but who is he? Is he? He's a man, but I, I was a woman, but I destroyed my body. And then here, all we're doing is we want to make sure that trans women be women. And yet you started much later, and these kids are, you know. These kids don't have a chance. Yeah. Thing, you know, in Missouri, the, uh, the, uh, basically the doctor in Missouri that's over Missouri basically created a, a rule. I love him. I absolutely love him. We medically transitioned kids. They're still doing it. We banned it. So he came up with a rule that said, all right. Here's what we're going to do. If you medically transition adults or 
kids, we need to tell them that it's A, experimental, doesn't cure anything, causes, uh, causes more suicide. Um, the adults that start it need to go through an 18 month worth of therapy and the trans activists are flipping out. Why? Because it makes people talk about it. It gives people the information that people need to know. If you want to medically transition, do it, but know the truth. It's not, it doesn't cure anything. It's medical transition, and we're making our society sick. And while I'm peeing in London. And Stonewall come back. Stonewall have said that they that most people who go through these transitional processes don't have these complications. What poppycock. That's not true. The only long-term study. Poppy, 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 poppycock. So, in other words, about being informed. Yeah. Where's informed. the debate? Who, who's yeah. going to debate? I mean, I had a debate with the, the biggest urologist in, in Boston who refused. Nobody will sit with me. You know why? Because nobody can debate me. This is wrong. This is a black and white issue. There is no gray in this. We should not medically transition children. And shame on people that are afraid of losing jobs. Shame on gays and lesbians for not speaking up. Shame on doctors. Shame on therapists. Because I get those emails. I get people that think that they are mutants. I get people that are killing themselves. I get people calling me with guns in their mouth. And while everybody else is concerned about trans women, women, women. They're concerned about not seeming bigoted, yeah. effectively. Yeah, it's okay for these kids. Yeah, I mean, you raised some very, very important points. And you've said that today you were talking about how you're almost at the point where you don't want to do this kind of no, work I'm done. Anymore. I've been doing this for five years. Listen, I'm not paid for this. I'm a business sales executive. I've given up that career to do this. Um, I just spent $400 that I don't have. I got a job. I'm accepting it. I have gotten paid for none of this. Hmm. My kids are absolutely, uh, I can't even get paid for my kid to go to college or stay on campus. I'm doing this because I'm a mother, because I gave birth, and because if I didn't do this, I wouldn't be a mother. And neither would any of you. I have three children. Well, Scott, three. I, think it, I think it's really important that you've come on and spoken about this and that you've let people know about your experience, because I think that in itself is an important message to get across. Did I get it across? Are you guys oh, hearing yeah. me? Did you guys hear me? Please.